prompted the launch of Zimbabwe's hashtag this flag movement is the hashtag this flag movement sponsored by foreign countries and does Pastor Ivan Mawarire have any ambitions of turning the movement into a political party and why is Mawarire saying it is time for new ideas to enter the political fray of Zimbabwe what time is it it's question time. Welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Tedu. Zimbabwe's President Robert Gabriel Mugabe has lambasted Pastor Evan Morira for not being a true preacher and also accused him of being sponsored by foreign countries. That this flag movement founder has been accused by Zimbabwean authorities for causing the recent upheavals in the country. Pastor Mawariri was arrested last week, but later released after the court threw out the charges laid against him. Mawariri is currently in South Africa and he has denied allegations that he has fled Zimbabwe to seek asylum here in South Africa. Meanwhile, the International Cross Border Traders Association is reported to be planning to shut down the Bait Bridge border post next week, they say. This will continue unless the Zimbabwean government lifts a ban on certain imports to the country. We are live, and therefore you can call us and air your views. The numbers to dial 089-110-4210 if you are calling us from outside the borders. 0027-891104210. Our Twitter handle at question time 24. My guest, the pastor himself, Evan Moariri. Hashtag this flag. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I truly appreciate it. How old are you? I uh, turned 39 in uh, March uh, this year. So you represent the young militant voices coming out of Zimbabwe? I, absolutely. I represent the young patriotic voices that uh, love Zimbabwe. What prompted, indeed, the launch of this flag? It, it was a very personal uh, a moment uh, when, I, when, when this was launched. I was complaining about my own personal struggles. And uh, what I did is that I complained to a, a group of people that are on social media with me uh, through a video that I just posted talking about this flag and how I felt my own nation had stood in the way of the dreams that I've had uh, ever since I was a child. Mm -hmm. And of course that then you know, went viral as more and more people identified with what I had said and their frustrations and saying, you know, I felt the same way for such a long time. Uh, and and that's, how, that's how this started out. So what is this hashtag, this flag? Is this a movement? Is there leadership? What is it? It, it's, it, it really is a platform for citizens to express themselves uh, and not just to express themselves but to hold their government account for the things that they have promised us and not delivered on. And uh, it then became a movement, or at least what the citizens who are part of it have now called a movement. But it, really, at its core, it is the voice of the citizens. It is a rallying call for citizens of Zimbabwe to wake up from their slumber, to become bolder, and to not be afraid. You see, one of our key goals with this flag is to scale the wall of fear and get to a place where we say, listen, we can't be afraid to speak out to build our own nation anymore. So that's the core of what it's about. So what are you? Are you the leader? Well, I think I'm, I'm the person that started it. The leadership of this flag is, is very unique. And a lot of people, again, have been asking, so, you know, where are the structures? And I know even the authorities are trying to find out where are the structures, who's funding it, where is it coming from? The leadership of this flag is found in the heart of every Zimbabwean. See, the thing about this flag is that it didn't start because of me. It was already there before I came. People had these frustrations. Every Zimbabwean has had an ideal Zimbabwe hidden in their heart for a long, a long time. And in secret, we all kind of take a peek and we close it up when we get in public because we don't think it's possible. So who's funding you? We are funded by the citizens of Zimbabwe. Citizens Everything. of Zimbabwe say they don't have money. Exactly. And this is the fun thing about this flag is that it's not funded in the way that political parties or normal political movements are funded. It's what you can do with what you have where you are. For example, when we call the shutdown, 
every Zimbabwean funded that shutdown with their own wage for one day. Hold it there. Dougie, you are in the valve. Uh, my friend uh, Paul, uh, Mom, Mompo. Mpo. Mompo. Yes. Mompo, I want to tell you, I congratulate this pastor. He's doing what God has told him to do. And he must carry on doing it. President Mugabe says he's not a true wicked. man of the cloth, Dougie. Hey? President Mugabe says he's not a true man of the cloth. No, he's a true man of the cloth. Okay. And he must carry on because God is with him. And if, when it says, the Bible says, if God is for me, nobody, nobody can be against me. It doesn't matter how big that Mugabe thinks he is. He's small in the eyes of God. And when God gets out of him, you're going to hear the other tune. Okay. Because I take my hat off to a man that is prepared to stand up for the right and to shun the wrong. Okay, Dougie, thank you very much for the call. Now, Pastor Mawari, mm. do you want President Mugabe to go? I think it, this is the cry of our generation to say, Baba, it's time up. It's time for you to rest and it's time for you to let another generation step in and take this country forward where it needs to go. We've been stuck in the same place for way too long. But he say, he's on record as saying, I, well, you even mock him actually, and you would have to do that before you go, um, that uh, he, he is really serving at the mercy of the people. If the people are saying, uh, and I, he will go. And, and I think th this, th this, for me, begs which people? Because all we have to do is to look at the condition of the people that he says are forcing him to stay. And that condition tells a story. Because nobody who does not have access to their own money, who doesn't get a job since they graduated in 2012, would say to you, stay. It's become, it has become, this is a message that has grown louder and louder and louder. And more so in my generation. It's time up. It's time up. David, you are in Palito. Yes. Go ahead. Look, uh, I need to talk to this man called a pastor. I'm also from Zim. Okay. I salute that man. I salute him. I support him in every way. Pastor, keep it up, man. We are behind you. Man. We have suffered enough. Enough is enough. We are tired of this man called Mugabe. Mugabe has ruined our country. We are suffering now, right now. We are here in the diaspora. We work, we're making projects for other countries, but what, we're not doing anything for, for our country. A lot of us brain drain has happened from, from, from Zim. Okay. If you go in each and every country, you find the Zimbabweans. And the Zimbabweans are positioned, they're doing projects there. And we're not doing that. Is anything for our country. We are prepared to do anything, Pastor. We're not going to rest until we have liberated our country. Zanapi has ruined our country. David, thank you very much for the call. Is this the message that you're getting across? I think, I think this is the message that it doesn't need getting across. The writing is on the wall. But Robert Mugabe, the president, mm -hmm. says you are a sellout. You are funded by you know, enemies of Zimbabwe. Th this has been the response our government has always given to genuine cries of its citizens. And it is the wrong response. As citizens, when we cry out to our president and our government, what we expect for you to do is to reassure us, is to bring us back to a place of being inspired again. But instead, you bring us to a place of intimidation, of arrest, and of banishing us to other nations. You don't treat your own citizens like that, even if they have a descending view against you. Okay, what happened when you were uh, detained? Did you sleep over? Yes, I slept over in the police cells. And you were saying that you were with other young fellows there? Yes, I was with other young fellows that I met uh, you know, in this cell. Okay. And changed, it changed my perspective of the people that sometimes we call thieves. You know, because these young men opened up to me and they said to me, Pastor, I admit that I stole a two liter bottle of cool drink from, from the shop. But let me tell you why I did it. And I said, tell me. And they said, I don't have a job. I've never been able to work a day in my life since I left school. And I'm 26. How do you expect me to live? Hold it there. There's a caller on the line. I can bet you my last Zim dollar. Mm -hmm. He doesn't agree with you. Okay, let's hear it. Courage Manguiro. Yeah, well, thank you uh, for letting me participate in the program. Yes. I can see uh, the man of the cloth there, that is a liar. You know, it's a shame. He, he, he spells God in reverse. 
Uh, we are waiting for them to do their funny, funny stuff in Zimbabwe violence. We are waiting for them, and we will clear that down. Zimbabwe will never go to the dogs. ZANU PF was given by a uh, mandate by the people to rule, and it shall do that with President Robert Mugabe. We are working with our Zim asset to try and, uh, you know, resuscitate our economy. We'll move forward. Those Western countries that are busy sponsoring him will soon take off. He knows what happened to Morgan Zwangirai. Pastor, I'm very disappointed in you. People of Zimbabwe ought not to follow your example. You are such a disgrace. Thank you so much, Nko. Thank you, Courage. Courage never disappoints me. <laughs> I knew he wasn't going to agree with you. Well, you know, Courage is entitled to his own opinion. Uh, uh, you know, we, 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 we just have to look at the facts. Where are the 2.2 million jobs that our government promised us? Where is the investment that they said would come into the country? And you're telling me that they are applying a Zim Asset program. For how long? They sell us the same story every single election, and not one of those promises come to pass. We lost more jobs and closed more industries in the history of our nation since the last election until now. You cannot argue with the facts. It doesn't matter what you say. Whether or not I'm a disgrace, the fact is that the issues speak for themselves. You are aware that you're playing into politics now? Well, it's, it's inevitably. You, okay. you, 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 you are going to have to step into, into, into political talk. And you are ready to be tackled as a politician? <laughs> as a citizen. Hold it there. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll take your calls. This is Question Time. Unlock a whole new world of African hospitality. Experience world-class luxury, unparalleled adventure, royal banquets, wild safari, and intimate live music performances. Book your three-day escape today. Brought to you by ESP Africa. Producers of the award-winning Cape Town International Jazz Festival. The Royal Escape Experience. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. My guest today is Pastor Ivan Mawarire. Hashtag this flag in Zimbabwe. Now, Pastor, you saying you're aware, inevitably you're entering into politics. Is this a political movement in its infantry stages? No, this is, this is a citizen's movement, and it's got to remain that, because this is the uniqueness that it has, in that it has been able to attract people from all sorts of backgrounds, whether political backgrounds or uh, religious backgrounds or racial backgrounds or tribal backgrounds, to be able to express themselves first as Zimbabweans. All right, so it, it beginning Cope to started that way. Or beginning to move this flag into into a political um, you know movement, I think begins to kill the spirit of patriotism that's forming in the hearts of Zimbabweans right now. Okay, Abigail, you are in Kruger's dog. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Abigail. I'm Zimbabwean. Okay. And uh, I support uh, the hashtag this flag. Uh, it pains me a lot uh, that uh, our country has gone to the dogs. And today I was uh, crying that uh, people were forced to march against a noble idea. Uh, Ivan Mawarire is one of our voice back home and our voice. And we, we are praying for you, my brother. Don't even give up because uh, we are speaking the same language. I'm an ex-teacher. I couldn't find a job here in Zimbabwe, in South Africa. I'm just a housewife reduced to, uh, to do a, a housemaid. 
because of Mugabe. My parents were killed with, uh, by Mugabe. My brother lost a, a hand because of Mugabe. What type of a, 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 a president who does that, who allows anarchy like that? And now that someone has stood up, some who are eating and feeding uh, from Mugabe, the 15 billion is gone, or our uh, hope to go back to Zimbabwe. Right now, I wish my children can't find jobs uh, in South Africa because they are aliens, they are treated like aliens. And okay. now you tell me that Mugabe is, is still uh, legitimate there. Okay. I, we suffered 2008 because of him. Right now, all over the world, Zimbabweans go, not because they want. We want to go back to Zimbabwe. We want to go back home. Okay, because, Abigail. Uh, you know, it's not good to be in a foreign land. And okay. we are bleeding. All right, thank you very much, Abigail, for the call. But, 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 do, do, do you sense the passion in that lady? No, I can hear. Exactly. This is what, and you have to understand, we have walked a long journey as Zimbabweans. This is not something that we've just come up with and we've just said, hey, let's make some noise. It's been a long time. And one thing that I know is that even people in the ruling party know that history is about to present something very different for this nation. And you even uh, got an endorsement from uh, Loveness Saurombe. And you welcome that. You know, it, it's, for me, the exciting thing is that patriotism is alive in the hearts of Zimbabweans once again. Mm. No matter who you are, no matter where you come from. I love it when people within ZANU-PF look at each other and say, listen, you are messing up. This is now too much. I love it when people in the opposition look at each other and say, listen, we can't keep going this way. Something is wrong here. We are starting to put our country first once again. And the, 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 the requirements of the people are now coming to the fore. It's a journey, but we're getting to the destination. What are you doing in South Africa then? Well, I travel here, I travel here regularly as a pastor, okay. uh, as I do to other parts of the world, uh, you know, doing my pastoral work with pastoral uh, you know, ministries. Uh, but one of the things I've also come to do in South Africa along with that work is also to meet citizens here in South Africa, citizens of Zimbabwe who are here. I was on the street the other day and met up with young men who are artisans, who hold up placards that say electrician, plumber, tiler, and I spent time talking and we prayed together on the street. And I said, brothers, I come with nothing else but hope. And before I go back, can I pray with you that your life may go well with you here? But also to thank you for crossing a border, leaving your family so that you can look after them back home. That's loving your country. Rufaro, you are in the Western Cape. Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, I would just love to support uh, uh, this flag hashtag uh, by Pastor Ivan Mawarire. I believe in a race, a man has to give uh, the, the baton to the next man. And we believe that our president is very tired. He needs to give the baton to the next man, to a fresh man. That's what happens. Uh, if other citizens feel more Zimbabwean than other citizens, then there is a big problem. We are all bona fide citizens of Zimbabwe, and we deserve a life. We deserve happiness. We deserve to be with our children. I'm here in, in South Africa, Cape Town. My children are back home in Zimbabwe. I am trying to fend for them. And it is not fair because we've, been, we've not been given a chance by our, our very own president, our very own blood, our very own brother and father. And that is very unfair. Thank you that very much. That is so unfair. Thank you, Rufaro. Indeed, uh, well, you're uh, getting a lot of support, I must say. But um, what, what role would you like South Africa to play? I think South Africa has, has always been a friend to Zimbabwe, even since the liberation struggle. Mm. The ideals that our fathers and our grandfathers went to war for are ideals that must still be stood for even today. And the role that we would love to see South Africa play is to play a role that supports, a role that can stand and speak to their counterpart, particularly the leaders in the ANC, to speak to their brother leader and say, brother, this is going wrong. 
Brother, we see your children are here across the border. We hear your children crying sometimes from, uh, from next door. You know, in Africa, we have, we have Ubuntu. My father's brother is my father. Mm -hmm. I should be able to go to him and say, Dad, my dad is not treating me right. Mm -hmm. But when we do that here with the NC, we don't see them going back home to our father, their brother, to say, don't mistreat your children, or to say, I think I need to mediate between you and your children. And we hope that this begins to happen. Are you disappointed in the ANC? I'm, I'm disappointed. I am not afraid to tell you that I am disappointed. I got the news the other day that the uh, Secretary General of the NC uh, said that this flag and Mawari, the whom he has never met, are funded and founded by the West. I don't need somebody to come from the outside of the country to come and tell me that my kids are starving. It's a life I live every day. And for me, it speaks of the gap between the politician and the citizen. They don't know the reality that we actually live on uh, you know, every day. Paul, you are in Peter Marisbeck. Yes, how are you, my brother, man? I'm well. Thanks for the call. No, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. Um, I want to check with uh, uh, Pastor Ivan Mawarire. Um, I understand he might have a very good cause for whatever he's doing. I, I understand when we, we, we support him. But my question to him is, I understand at some point he was a Zanupia youth or he was involved in Zanupia for a business. Uh, is it is, is it still in the same position, or is trying to use uh, Zanu PF uh, factionalism, but at the same time use the populace in order to drive Zanu PF factionalism? Because the thing is, we, we know he was he was part of the, the system, and so what has gone wrong now? Why has it changed? What what is what what is the future? What is he trying to to to, to come up with? That's what, that's my question. Can we ask him on the line. Oh, okay, Paul. Just just to hang on there. Uh, I think uh, uh -huh. he's got a question. Uh, Paul, I, I want to know when was I a Zanu PF youth? What position did I hold? And what activities did I play? Because I have uh -huh. never in my life been a Zanu PF youth. I've never held a position, and I've never been a card carrying member of Zanu PF. Yeah, you, you, you can deny it, but, but we as individuals, you know that no, we no, want to... Where, 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 where? Can you, you tell me what position I held? And I, I think at some point we the, 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 the child president, I think in the 90s. And so what, what has gone wrong now if you yes. accept those things? And I, I appreciate what you're saying. I was child president 23 years ago when I was 16, and it's a government program, not a party program. So you've got your facts wrong there, my brother. Okay, it's fine. Thank you. Okay, so you, you, you've you been a ZANU, PF? No, absolutely not. 23 years ago, when I was 16, our country celebrates the Day of the African Child, June 16, which emanates from uh, as an experience here in South Africa. And every single year, our government organizes the young people to participate in a mini-mock parliament. And what we do is that the young people are trained and taught how government works, how to represent uh, their constituents, what does it mean to govern well. When I was 16 at the time, I was the member of parliament for my constituents in Mashonaland West. And at the time, then, I was also chosen to be the child president for the Republic of Zimbabwe from 1993 to 1994. So and you couldn't um, have been a child president of an, another party? Oh no, not, not a party, of a nation. So yeah, this but, is why I, this but, is why but I refuse. But were you not uh, taught at that level that to be president, you should have been voted in by members of a political party? At that, at that level, they don't go that deep. Okay. It's a government program okay. which recognizes an international day. It's not, uh, June 16 is not celebrated by a party. It's celebrated by a nation. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, where to from here? Well, we continue as citizens to help each other, number one, to be bolder citizens that can stand up and that can speak. And already I think people kind of say, well, so when is, when is success going to be declared? It has already been declared because there are more citizens today that have stood up, that have raised their voices than there have been in the past. But going forward, we are still uh, looking at uh, more protests that we are going to do until government gets to a place where it responds to its citizens, not reacts until it responds. But we're also getting to a point where we're looking towards 2018 elections. And we are saying that if Zimbabweans are indeed tired of this government constitutionally, we can replace them and we can do it through the ballot box. So we're going through voter education, voter registration, and encouraging each other and teaching each other how to vote and how to protect the vote. And to vote for who? Well, I think this is a decision that the citizenry now is going to have to make. Who are our, you endorsing? Our, our opposition politics has a chance to shine. 
right now, they have a chance to inspire the citizen. They have a chance to capture the imagination of Zimbabweans. So I don't, it's not my job to tell the citizens, vote for this person. That person and that party are going to have to prove themselves. Will you stand? I have chosen that I will not get involved in politics because I'm more effective as a citizen. But you are in politics now. Are you, you are in politics when you are in Zimbabwe, whichever way you, you spin the coin. Let's look at our tweets. Zim Runaisen, so much support from the Zim diaspora, genuine dissatisfaction with the status quo in Zimbabwe. The Love More Zippo says uh, Zimbabwe is no longer the same. Please ask uh, RM to step down before he kills Zimbabwe. In the last tweet, uh, Marilele Maluleke says all Sadek region countries must rally behind this flag. We need stability in the region. Okay. Well, um, we, we have unfortunately run out of time. Mm. What is your message to President Mugabe? Our message to President Robert Gabriel Mugabe is that the nation that our parents fought for, the blood that was shed for the nation of Zimbabwe is too precious for us to keep quiet and watch a beautiful country be destroyed. We are ready to build and we are ready to stand up to allow our voices to be registered without being afraid of him or the party or anything else because Zimbabwe is for Zimbabweans, it's for everyone. Do you think Josiah Tonga Gara, Herbert Chitepo, Ziapa Pamoyo would be proud of you? hundred percent. You took the words right out of my mouth. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Appreciate it. That was question time for today. A big thank you to my guests and to you for watching the show. Let's meet again tomorrow. Goodbye.